Hi everybody, welcome back. It's me, Miss Ward, and our friend Lavender. And it's lesson three, the pattern of daytime and nighttime for our grade one spinning earth. Welcome back, I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. All right, so if we remember, we've got Sai and his grandma. And Sai wants to know why this guy looked different to him than it did to his grandma when they talked on the phone. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. And in order to figure out that really big question, we're gonna look at a tiny question today, which is what can we see in the sky at different times? So really what we're looking at now is just this, what can we see in the sky at different times? What do we see in the sky in the morning, in the afternoon, at night? What do we see? So last time we were together, we made all of these observations, right? So we took our observations of the sky in the morning and the sky in the afternoon, and we took all of the information from that book we read. Remember we read After Sunset? We did this also. Okay, we read After Sunset. Um, we gathered all of this data over here. Do you see this data that we gathered, right? So now that we have all this information, um, we have to put this data, all this information um, into some kind of order. We have to organize it. Let's talk a little bit about what data is, okay? So first I'm gonna add data to my vocabulary list. I'm gonna add it right here. So if you look, we have we have four words up there already. We have daytime, nighttime, predict, remember that's what we did yesterday, and we have data, right? And data is all of this information that you record and gather during an investigation. So all of that information we got from our book after sunset, that's data our sky observations in the morning and the afternoon, that's data, right? And so all of this stuff that we've gathered so far is data. So this is the data we need to organize, right? We have all of our sky observation data and we need to get it in a different order so that it can make a little bit more sense. Cause right now it's kind of all over the place. We have our daytime and nighttime data all kind of mixed up. We have the moon even off the chart. so. We have to organize it in a slightly better way. So let's look at how we're gonna organize it. I have these picture cards um, that show all the different observations we record, okay? And these cards are gonna help us organize our sky observation data in a new way so that it makes a little bit more sense, it's a little bit less messy, um, and we can figure out what our data is telling us. So. I've made a big chart, right, um, of our daytime and nighttime data, okay? And if you look, and I bet you guys might have used a chart like this before. We're gonna put everything that happens just in the day in this circle, and everything that happens just in the night in this circle, and anything that happens both in day and night, we're gonna put in the middle where those two circles overlap, okay? and then we'll be able to organize our data that way. Okay, you have a couple choices at this part. Okay. If you have the, the packet that goes along with this unit or you can print it out, um, then what you're gonna wanna do is cut out these cards um, and then stick them on your chart that you have because you have a chart just like mine if, um, if you have the packet. And then I want you to go ahead and sort these cards. Where do you think they go? Daytime, nighttime, or daytime and nighttime? And then as soon as you're happy with where they are, you can glue them to the chart, okay? If you don't have the packet, it's totally okay um, because we're gonna go ahead and place these cards together as a group. But if you do have the packet, you wanna pause this video now so that you can do it on your own before you see my ideas, okay? Okay, let's think about where these cards go on our chart, okay? So if you're at home, I either want you to point where you think they go, right? Or you can pause the video and do the cards on your own. Um, either way works just fine. 
but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I know in the book they saw an airplane. Do I see my airplane? So we need to decide where the airplane goes. I'm gonna make myself big. Really cool. Okay, so they saw the airplane at nighttime, but I know that I've also seen airplanes during the daytime. So I'm gonna put my airplane right in the middle, right? Because an airplane is something you'd see during the day and at night, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Let's do another one. Let's see, what about a bird? What do you guys think about birds? Do you see birds in daytime, nighttime, or both? What do you think? I think maybe we see birds mostly in the daytime. Because even in the book, they did see birds, but they saw them early in the night, and I think the birds were maybe going to bed or something. Um, what's next? What's next? What about... Ooh, here's a fun one. Planets. When would we see planets in the sky? I think, I think nighttime. I think nighttime, right? I've never seen a planet during the day. But maybe you can. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna put it there, but I might be wrong, and that's okay. Um, ooh, how about a meteor? Do you remember when they saw the meteor in the book? I do too. It was at nighttime. Nighttime. And what else have I got? Um, ooh, how about a cloud? When do we see clouds? Daytime? Nighttime? All the time if you live in Seattle? <laughs> I'm going to put it in daytime and nighttime. That might just be because I live in Seattle. I feel like there's always clouds. Sometimes you can't even see the other things in the sky because all you can see is clouds. Um, how about bats? When do we see bats? Daytime, nighttime, or both? I've only seen bats at nighttime. Have you guys ever seen bats? Ugh, I love seeing bats at night. Um, how about the space station? Remember in the book they were really lucky and they got to see a space station? When was that? You want a point? Daytime, nighttime, both. I think we can only see it at nighttime, the space station. And how about the sun? Daytime, that one was easy. And the moon? Daytime, nighttime, or both? I know most of the time we think about seeing the moon only at night. But I know that I've seen the moon during the day, too. Have you guys ever seen the moon during the day? I have. I'm going to put it here. I might be wrong, but that's where I'm going to put it in the middle, daytime and nighttime, right? And then the last one I have is stars. When do we see stars? Daytime, nighttime, or both? I'm going to put it right here in nighttime. So here's our chart, right? On my chart, and yours can be different, and I'm not saying mine is, is all correct because I might be wrong on some of these. On my chart, uh, I have the sun and the bird in daytime, and I have a meteor, a space station, stars, a planet, and a bat in nighttime, and the ones that are in both are an airplane, the moon, and clouds. What did your chart look like? Okay, I'm pretty sure this is my favorite part of today's lesson. We're gonna do the Sky Investigations role play. This is gonna be so much fun, I'm excited about it. So, um, during the day, right? During the day, we can see the sun, and the only time we can see the sun, for sure, is during the day, right? Um, so maybe we can't always see the sun during the day because it's behind a cloud or something, but the sun is there during the day. So how could we use our bodies? And 
Lavender helped me out with this one too because I don't have you guys here with me. But how can we use our bodies to show the sun? Do you guys have an idea of how we could use our bodies to show the sun? Lavender and I talked about this yesterday, actually, and we decided the best way to show the sun would to be to go like this, to make a big circle above our heads. Can you see my circle? Okay. What do you guys think? Is that okay? Can we show the sun like this? I would ask you, but you're not here to ask. So here's the sun, okay? And then the next one is, how could we use our bodies to show stars? You guys have any ideas on how we could show stars with our bodies? I thought about this one for a long time. What Lavender and I finally decided on how we could use our bodies to show stars is to go like this with our hands. So each hand is kind of like a star. Okay? So can you guys do these with me? Let's make a sun sun and let's make stars stars all right so you guys ready we're gonna practice and lavender is gonna help you ready here we go um when and i've got rosie over here helping me too we're gonna use the lights to be day and night okay so when the lights are on it's gonna be daytime and when the lights are off it's gonna be nighttime Got it? Okay, let's start. You ready? And really, like, stand up. We're gonna do this all together. Here we go. E even Lavender's doing it. Wait, you'll see. Here we go. Tea time. Night time. Tea time. I really like that a lot. That was totally my favorite part. I think I, when I watch this, I think I'm gonna rewind that part and do it again. Um, but I wanted to look at another way of looking at what we just did. Did you notice that it was always daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime? I noticed that too. So that was a pattern. So we're gonna read a little bit about patterns from this book called Patterns of Earth and Space, okay? And this is a special kind of book called a reference book. So instead of me reading this book from beginning to end, you can read different parts of the book at different times, okay? And you guys have, uh, you guys can find this book um, where, wherever you found the link to this video as well, okay? So a pattern, like I said, is something that happens over and over again. Daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime, right? And patterns help us understand what we're seeing, okay? So I'm gonna look in the table of contents and look at the very beginning of this book on observing patterns. And I'm gonna read this to you. I gotta put on my glasses though, here I come. Observing patterns. The beads on this bracelet make a pattern. The colors are in the same order over and over again. To see the pattern, you can't just look at one bead. You have to observe many beads. Here's another pattern. If the traffic light is red, the cars are stopped. If the traffic light is green, the cars are moving. It happens the same way over and over again. Anytime the light is red, the cars are stopped. Anytime the light is green, the cars are moving, that's a pattern, okay? So we have pattern, something we observe to be similar over and over and over again. And did you say I even drew a picture on here of those beads from the book so that we remember what a pattern is? So blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and add pattern to our vocabulary list. Ooh, we have six, nope, I can count five. One, two, three, four, five words on our vocabulary list. Okay, 
So patterns are things that happen over and over again. What are some other things that happen over and over again the same way? Why don't you guys tell your partner, what are some other things that you've seen that have patterns that happen over and over again the same way? I'm gonna to talk to Lavender, you talk to your partner. Did you guys notice that when we did our daytime, nighttime, that was also a pattern with our bodies? Because we said day, night, day, night, right? So it was always in a pattern, right? So let's look at those patterns of daytime and nighttime on page 10 of our reference book. Here it is. Good thing I still got my glasses on. I'm gonna start reading it. Patterns of daytime and nighttime. There are patterns too when we see things in the sky. In the daytime, we see the sun. In the nighttime, we see stars. In the daytime, the sky is bright. It is bright in the daytime because of light from the sun. In the nighttime, when there's no light from the sun, the sky is dark and we can see the stars. I love these pictures. Do you guys see all these pictures where it shows different places in the day and at night? That's it for today, you guys. See you next time, Lavender and I. Can't wait to see ya. Bye.